Hi everybody, Lori Marie here, mixed media artist in Vallejo, California. This is my second video today. I am on fire. This one is not for the weak hearted. It's quite the project. Oh. <laughs> but it is still National Pajama Day and I am no longer drinking coffee because I hope to get a little nap. But we are going to, together, we are going to make a page with some windows in it. All right, I always have a hard time showing you like this. Let me. So here are the windows. This is with mica, a sheet of mica on it. Delicious. So uh, no more. You don't get to peek anymore. See you on the table. All right, this two-page spread is not finished yet, but I want to show you what we're going to play with today. Isn't that fun? This is a piece of mica with 12 uh, pictures there. I will go in and stabilo and embellish at a later date. You'll see this when the whole book is done. This book is just about done. Not much room left in it. Nice fat book. This is a piece of uh, mailable art that I got from Rosanna. So this is what we're going to play with today. I've been procrastinating because it's quite involved. I don't know if it'll be one video or two videos. We shall see. All right, let's go through the supply list, okay? You'll need your gesso, Mod Podge. You will need a brush and some paper towel. And I'm sorry to say that my um, baby blue that I just got has already walked off. So we're using our substitute brush today. That's all right. We'll get another one. Four grommets. Black duct tape. Some acrylic paint. Sandpaper. Watercolor. I'm going to be using ochre to go with the kind of turquoisey acrylic. A sheet of mica. This is actually a mineral. Comes in sheets. Love it. You will need a. This is a piece of a manila folder, and I cut it to approximately the same size as my pages. All right. You might have to be writing this down. This is a template to create the windows. And the windows I created six windows. Make as many as you'd like. I made six, and each window is uh, between a quarter, one and a quarter inches to one and a half inches. So whatever you want to play with there, that's entirely up to you. I have some old book pages that I'm going to tear up for underpants. Uh, for the two-page spread, I have pages that are glued together on this side and pages that are glued together on this side. Now, this is all the room that I have in this book. So if I had room in this book, I, for my two-page spread for this piece, I would have pages glued together on this side, pages glued together on this side, and then I would tear out three to four pages from the center. That's not an option, so it's just going to make my book all the fatter. I can live with that. Because what's going to happen is this, once it's covered with underpants, is going to be stuck in there. Pictures on this side, pictures on this side. And then I have a group of, oh, I have this clipped together all over the screen here. I have this clipped down so that I can work on this a little bit easier. Otherwise, it pops up. I don't know why it pops up. Look at the size of that book. And then I have uh, some images and words that I've torn out. The tearing uh, makes it easier for them to glue down, so I do tear them out. And remember that if you tear it toward yourself, you don't get that white edge. All right, That's demonstrated in, in many other videos that I have, but we'll go through that again. So I'm going to use this for one of the windows. What I want to do is tear the part I want for the window toward me. And 
it's beveled so it will glue down flatter and it leaves the white edge behind so there's no white edge on that one and there's a white edge on the one I'm not going to use All right, and I would just tear her down to a smaller size doing the same thing selfishly tearing the image toward myself so it is beveled and no white edge All right, let me organize a little bit and then oh exacto stabilo and I may add more to the supply list as we go you know how that works out the first thing that we're going to do is take that piece of whatever you're using I used a manila folder because it's uh, thicker than paper but not as thick as cardboard because our books get so fat anyway that having a thinner piece is better so I just have some old book pages that I'm going to tear up and glue down onto this creating the background and I remove that white edge because that bothers me I might use it for another project later on but not for this project now the bits and pieces of the old book pages you don't want them too large but you don't want them so small that it takes you forever to put them on my poor brush do I have you guys sympathy that I've lost my brush again I had a play date in the classroom and uh, and yeah the brush did not come home with me. It's taken a walk to another forever home. But I'm going to go right up to that edge and leave it hang over just a little bit. But I'm not going to wrap this. The other side is just going to meet up with it. All right, I'm going to cover this side whoop, upside down. I'm going to cover this side completely, then I'm going to flip it over and cover the other side. Okay, I'm going to just put the last little piece of underpants on. I have them on the other side. I let that dry a little bit before I turned it over and added the underpants to this side. So I have underpants on both sides of that manila folder. My t handy dandy Teflon sheet is a class, so we don't get to use that right now. But I'm going to bring my book back, <clears throat> and I am going to put a generous layer of gesso on the two page spread. Now, my gesso is. Uh, relatively thick. It is not a thin gesso, which I like because I like the texture, but whatever you're accustomed to using, a generous amount. Get in close to those clips. They'll probably have gesso on them by the end of this project. Grab a page from a magazine, please. I don't think I said that in the supply list. Maybe I did. If I did, hooray. If I didn't, then grab one. Once I get a generous amount of gesso on there, I'm going to grab that magazine page. And I'm going to lay it down and tap it a bit. And then I'm going to slowly remove it because I want some nice mounds in that gesso. Nice. Nice texture. delicious 
we're bringing back in that manila folder that we covered with some underpants and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to put a generous amount of gesso on that page. You'll be doing both sides, but uh, one side's going to have to dry before, <laughs> before you can do the other side. I haven't figured out how to uh, take a shortcut on that one. All right, and I just took that magazine page that we used I fold it in half so that the gesso is on the inside. I'm going to place that down. And I will slowly lift that up in high hopes that there's some texture under there. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. That's gorgeous. So we're going to let that dry and then we will do the other side. I do have uh, the heat vent underneath my desk, so I'm going to put these pieces under there, and I am going to go walk Hudson. He will be so happy. So Hudson and I had a wonderful walk. Blue skies. It's gorgeous. I put gesso on this. I'm just using the other side of that magazine page that I used before. Then I'm going to slowly take it up, creating texture underneath. Beautiful. Now I'm going to toss that away. I'm going to go ahead and take the heat stick to this. You can dry it. You can dry the gesso. Remember, if you get too close with your heat stick, you will bubble your gesso. If that's the look that you're looking for, go for it. All right, my gesso on that insert is dry. I'm just going to set that aside for a minute. We're just going to do a recap. Now remember my book is very, very full, so I did not have to glue pages together. They were already glued together from a previous two-page spread. So if you are not to that spot in your book and you still have some open pages, you will be gluing pages together on the right side and gluing pages together on the left side to create a two-page spread. All right, if your pages are thin, you will glue maybe four pages together. If they're not thin, you will glue maybe three pages together, something that will give you stability, okay? And then this was just a piece of manila um, uh, folder that I cut to the size of my pages. I put underpants on both sides. I gessoed both sides. With the gesso, I put the gesso down, took a magazine page, pressed it down, removed it slowly so that it would create texture. All right, now we are going to grab acrylic paint. I'm hoping I have enough of this acrylic paint because I like the color. So we shall see. I'm gonna just blop some color on, oh yeah, now we'll see. We shall see. Grabbing my substandard paintbrush. That's not nice. I'm going to paint this side. I'm going to let that dry while I paint the two page spread. Bring my book in. Oh, I missed my Teflon sheet now. Oh, to have my supplies someplace else. All right, and I'm going to put some color on each side. That's quite a bit right there. Let's see how far that goes. So this side is completely dry. 
I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to bring in my uh, template for my windows. And I just uh, cut these out with an X-Acto blade. Believe me, they are not perfect. And they will not be perfect on the page either. So the reason I'm going to do this first is I'm going to paint this side with that turquoise. And I want some of the paint to go inside the window so that we're not looking at a raw edge in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around each window frame with a pen and mark the pages, or I'm sorry, mark the windows, and then I'm going to come in with uh, an X-Acto, and I'm just going to cut those windows out. I put a piece of cardboard underneath my page so that I don't have to worry about cutting my work surface, and then just go in with your X-Acto and cut along those lines. It's not really hard. It's not really thick. So this goes relatively easily. All these steps, I know. and then just remove each window. So do this to all six windows. You might want to save these for some future project. You know how that goes around here. All right, remove all six windows. I have six windows cut out. I'm just going to take some of that yummy acrylic paint while I still have some. And my brush, and I'm just gonna paint it. And I'm just going to paint in between the windows because I don't want that raw edge to show. It doesn't matter if it does, but if you have the opportunity to not show it, meh, yeah, up to you really, I guess. Okay, I think everything is dry. It's important that it's dry because we're going to go in with some sandpaper now. We're going to go back in here and we're going to lift up. Noisy, sorry. We're going to lift up that texture that the gesso gave us. And we're going to do this to this page and this page and our center page as well. Okay, this is a bit noisy. I'm sure it's quite annoying. So let me do this off screen and then I will bring you back and, and show you what I've done, okay? That would be better. I just want to show you the difference. Now I've pulled a little bit of the pages up from underneath and what do we call that, ladies and gentlemen? Texture. That's right. So now I'm going to move on to this page and then the center panel. Oh, look at that. Isn't that delicious? Yes, it is. You will need to dust it off. Makes kind of a little bit of a mess. Dust off all the stuff you just sanded off. Oh, I just want to touch it. It's so beautiful. All right, we are going to, after we're done touching it, we are going to bring in a watercolor. Now, I love ochre, and I have some ochre here mixed with blue water, <laughs> apparently. That's okay. You guys know that I like a juicy, dense, 
watercolor, which is totally possible. And then I'm just going to paint these pages. All three. The left, the right, the center panel on both sides. And then we will let that dry. I'm going to take a moment and chat with you. I need for you to like my stuff or not like thumbs up, thumbs down. YouTube doesn't care. Thumbs up, thumbs down. I like the thumbs up better. If you thumbs down, please just tell me why. My voice, the music I don't have, where I am on the screen, my projects, how boring I am not all of that stuff. Uh, what else? Oh, my shares are down, so if you can share the videos with somebody, that would be great. Also, uh, my subscribers is not growing, and YouTube likes to see the fact that my subscribers are growing, the numbers. So if you know of anybody that would enjoy these projects as much as we do, please share them. And also, uh, if they can subscribe, that would be wonderful. Comments are good. You guys are really, really good about leaving comments, and I try to respond to them. If there are questions, I try to answer them. If they're just comments, I still try to comment back. I love chatting up with you guys. I love for you to ask me questions about even other projects that you're working on so that we can figure out some issues as we go. Also, my other part of the infom infomercial is uh, I do leave links from Amazon for the products that I use. And I'm an affiliate, so I get credit for each click you make if you're checking it out or if you purchase something on Amazon through my links. All right, clearly I need to let these dry. All right, you guys still with me? So I did not talk about the fabric that was in between these pages when we started. And that's what I use to mend my book as I go because as they get fatter and fatter they start to break loose in the centers. And so I just take a piece of fabric with some Mod Podge and I just mend each page that needs it as I go. All right, I'm going to set the book aside and let me flip this over so this isn't so distracting. I'm going to bring in this, and can I tell which is the top and the bottom? Not that it even matters. Okay, go. This is the top. I'm going to bring in my mica sheet. So delicious. Mm, mm, mm. Love working with this stuff. I love the appearance of this. All right, we are going to start in one of the corners with our crocodile. And I'm going to make sure that I grab the mica and the page. I have my crocodile set at the largest hole, which is the lever all the way back. I do have a tutorial on how to use the crocodile too. I'm just going through the page and through the mica. Okay? Now I'm going to push that lever all the way forward so that it will install my grommet. And I do this one at a time so that the uh, mica doesn't move and get bent because it'll, there we go, it'll double up. It'll get some bubbles in it. So what I'm going to do now is decide where I want the next one. I'm going to put the next one over in this section. Push my crepidial back to the biggest hole. Go ahead and make a hole. Push the lever forward to the install. We're almost getting to the fun part. What do you think? Oh, it's all fun. All fun and games. Hear that pop? That's the grommet splitting on the back side. All right, so we're nice and flat. I'm going to go down to this corner down here. Crepidial to the hole. Oops. 
and I'm going to put a grommet here and a grommet there. All right, there's too much lift here and there's too much lift here, so I'm going to put a grommet in each of those spots as well. So here's my wonderful page. That's the front and that's the other side. <laughs> And this is the top. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're just going to wing it here. I want to take this edge off because this needs to fit flush into the book. So this has just become the top, regardless of what it was before. This has just become the top. What I'm going to do now is I am going to remove some of this mica from the edge. I'm going to put my ruler down against that page. And I'm just going to run my X-Acto down there. And you will hear it crackle and pop. Then you can fold it and break it, and off it comes. I left this raw edge of the page there, which I really like. Let's take some of this off too. There we go. All right. Ta da. I'm going to grab my Stabilo and just go around some of these edges more on this side than this side because this side has that beautiful window on it. So, Stabilo, here we go. Now, many of you are using a Q tip. Some of you are using a sponge. You just go ahead and do that. I am still going to use my finger and a little bit of moisture. And I'm just going to go around all the edges on this side and flip it over. So you guys know that I'm crazy about the Stabilo and the smokiness that it adds to a, a piece. But if you don't like that smokiness, don't add it. Or if you like to do something else, please do that. This just happens to be my signature. Ta-da! Beautiful. All right, let's bring that book back in. Make sure I've got it right side up. That would be disastrous. And what we're going to do now is we're going to place this into our book. Take our black masking tape. Place the masking tape along the edge of the page. Let me see if I can do that so you can see that. Just going to place the masking tape along the... Alright, I have the masking tape on the edge of that page. This is what it looks like on the other side. Alright. I forget. Well, we're just going to do it. Mm, no, we're going to do it this way. Sorry. You'll put this into the center, but it doesn't have to go all the way into the center because we need for it to move around a little bit. All right, then we will just push that masking tape down. Just as straight as an arrow, right? You know me better than that. All right, so that's going to flip this way. And then we're going to take another piece of masking tape. And if this hangs over the edge, don't worry about it. We can snip that later. And 
going to hit the side of that page and take it down into the center. So you have some nice mobility here. So it's not smack in the center so that it can't move. It's out from the center a little bit so that you've got some mobility there. Wonderful. And you can go in with your scissors and snip those edges. All right, I went back in and put two more grommets in uh, the mica. It was lifted just a little bit more than I wanted it to be on the ends, so I put two more grommets in there. But anyway, there's our page. Now we get to play, finally. All right, I've brought my images in. I have some words. I don't know if I'm going to use the words or not. We shall see. But I brought the images in that I'm going to place in the windows. Now remember we have watercolor on here. So we need to put the Mod Podge on our pictures rather than on our pages because the Mod Podge will move the watercolor. So we just kind of need to decide how big these pictures need to be. Tear them in a selfish manner so that we do not have a white edge. I'm going to put some Mod Podge on the back of her and glue her down. And I'll move the window back and forth all the time to make sure that the positioning of these pictures is where I want them. So that is where I want her. A piece of, excuse my reach, a piece of uh, paper towel is always a great idea to help put these down without smudging the Mod Podge onto the watercolor. girls too big. They'll be fine. All right, you can watch me glue down one more piece and then I'm going to let you go. Bring you back when I've got uh, more done. I'm going to finish the six pieces on this left side. Bring you back and show you and then we'll go to the other side. Less legs, ladies. You get less legs. Something like that. Bring it down. Put some Mod Podge on it. and paper towel it down. Some will overlap like this and some will not. Doesn't matter. All right, we have our six images glued down on that side. Very fun. This uh, masking tape does not want to stay down. There must be a little bit of moisture in the fabric. I put another piece on top of it. It'll dry, it'll surrender. All right, let's put a, a few of these on together, shall we? This is a fun one. She has a crown, so I'm putting her near the top so that she can keep her crown. So let's see how this window comes over. As long as your Mod Podge is still wet, you can move that image. I won't make you watch all of this, but it's kind of fun to watch the placement. And 
throwing things all over. Oh my goodness, you should, <laughs> you should see the studio. I've just been throwing things on the floor. All right, I'm going to put the other four on. All right, I'm just putting the last one down. Brought you back in for the final gluing. So there's our six images on that side. <laughs> Very fun. And our six images on that side. Like I say, the, oh, my tummy's growling. There must be moisture in the fabric. You will not have this problem. The black masking tape is really quite friendly to use. And now what? Now, of course, I am going to go around all the edges with my Stabilo and just blend everything in. All right, so I took the clips off. Here's the page we did. I will probably go in here and doodle a little bit. That'll be great. Wait for that fabric to dry so that poor masking tape will stick down our window with the yummy pictures behind it. Our, I put creative inspiration on here. The whole thing's grunged up just the way I like it. I'll probably go in with some dots just to embellish it. So, not a project for the weak hearted. <laughs> I hope you made it. It's worth it. Alright, go create. Go play. Go have fun. Thumbs up, thumbs down, share, comments, mm, oh, playlists, put me on a playlist. YouTube really likes that. All right, see you next time, you brave artists, you.